Okay. So, hello, my name is Jana Herranen, and I'm glad there is many people I also know from before, and we've been working with climate and sustainable education also before. So, nice to meet you, and also other people who are with us today. Uh, so, I'm a chemistry teacher and also a researcher. I do research on how to teach and learn about sustainability and climate change issues, and I will share some of my ideas and, of course, ideas of, of research, and then we can discuss about them and your other ideas after that. So maybe I'll just try to find my slides first. So as you all probably know, we are facing many issues uh, or challenges in our local and global environment. We know that uh, uh, climate and temperature of our climate is increasing and it affects to our environment and also to us humans, for example, through uh, climate changes and weather cycle changes and biodiversity amongst other, other issues. So therefore, we as teachers are really important role in, in teaching our students and also in um, thinking of uh, pedagogies, how we can um, improve um, learning ab about sustainability and climate in our own subjects. For example, if we teach, for example, chemistry, there are things we can do and also collaborate with other teachers. Uh, there are some uh, ideas um, suggested how we should uh, carry out sustainability education. It has, for, for example, we said that it should be encouraging participatory decision making and being interdisciplinary. So we uh, make collaboration with other teachers and with other disciplines. Also, it has been suggested that we could do learner centered or learner driven education. So, for example, I have been using this uh, question based approach with my students and also, for example, inquiry based uh, learning. Uh, it has been suggested that uh, sustainability should be transformative. So the students learn to make decisions in their own lives, uh, regards in environments, for example. Uh, it's encourage future thinking, th think about uh, pro probable and possible futures, what kind of ideas they have for it, negotiation skills with others, and also um, skills uh, related to action. And uh, in many cases, it's referred as action competence. It's connected to a concept of uh, self-efficacy. Uh, it contains, for example, ideas that uh, what kind of um, actions the people are doing successfully in a certain situation or their efforts when they accomplish something, for example, in link to learning and also actions in challenging situations. But actually also challenges uh, acts as catalyst for change. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that uh, people encounter challenges because they help us learn also. So we become sort of uh, resilient learners. There are different kinds of actions, different forms, what you can do in school. Um, in many sciences, we are uh, teaching this kind of a teacher-led um, way, which is also important if you want to teach about some uh, certain content. And also you can uh, use this kind of a student-centered way and where uh, learners can be participating in making decisions, regards, contents, for example, or learning methods. And then if you want to, for example, with older students, use the kind of student-led uh, method, you can also let the student have more, more role in, in making decisions about learners, learning. But of course, this also requires that teachers or mentors or experts are supporting the uh, learning processes. This is something I have been doing in, in um, mostly in higher education. 
And also, if you want to, you can start with your students, have more like a teacher-led approach first, and then move to um, learning approaches and where the students get more uh, sort of um, places where they make their own suggestion about what we should learn, and how could we learn them. There are many kind of approaches, um, project-based learning, of course, which is connected to also to start. Inquiry-based, which is, I guess, kind of familiar to everybody. Also discussion, context-based flexible learning. There are many, many kinds of ideas. I've been uh, using question-based learning myself quite much, and I'll uh, say something about that. But a um, few words about inquiry. Um, it can also be used in, in sustainability and climate change issues. Of course, it's, it might be different um, in regards to on, on that. But uh, I guess for, for science teachers, it's um, a bit more familiar to cope with uh, environment when you do inquiry. Uh, Project-based is also something that you do in START. So that's also a really important approach. Uh, but onto the question-based uh, learning, which is more familiar uh, to me, it is something that um, I use um, um, sort of to encourage the students to ask their own questions on the topic we are um, dealing with and to help them discuss and express their ideas and also reflect on their learning. So I get sort of um, feedback how they are doing. And also um, sometimes I try to use the students' questions, um, for example, in inquiry. So we, for example, uh, learn something and then students might have might have some questions and then we um, formulate them a bit and then carry out some inquiry based on those questions. And then um, it is many times encouraged to students to ask questions, but also when you are using this kind of pedagogy, you can think of if, if there's something you could uh, help the students to ask the questions. Is, is there some orientation maybe you want to do a demonstration on or uh, read a novel or uh, show them a video or a picture. So however you choose to orient the students. And also uh, you can practice some inquiry skills before or learn some content because it has been uh, studied that. And also, I guess you have seen it uh, in your classrooms that necessarily students don't know what to ask if they don't have any any uh, like content knowledge about the issue. So you might teach them something and then ask them to ask more questions about the topic. And then also then comes a question of um, what you do after the students have been uh, asking the questions. You can have different kind of kinds of um, um, inquiries or, or ways of addressing those, those questions in the classroom. Okay, so as, as we know, and I come to the conclusion that improving sustainability in climate change, education is a joint project for us teachers and researchers. So that's why I think it's important also to discuss and learn about these things together. And now it's time to um, discuss and hear about also about your ideas and ways of using or carrying out sustainability and climate change teaching in your own classrooms. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, I have um, teachers. I have a teacher climate change uh, last year with my students, uh, and I have used uh, the storytelling. Now I am uh, involved with, in another project with inquiry based learning. I want to ask you. Uh, Inquiry-based learning is uh, very different uh, from project-based learning. I mean, uh, the two methods are based on 
questions. I understand. Okay. Uh, you can start with questions, but of course you can, I think you also can have sort of like um, context or something when you start with a project. But I guess usually you have some kind of a question because also in like science, you should have research question. Okay. Yeah, please carry on. Okay. Um, uh, I try. I, this year I want to test with my students this, uh, this method, inquiry-based method. Uh, so I'm looking for a good question <laughs> to start with them. Okay. Okay, so uh, you're thinking of what kind of question you should have when you are starting with inquiry with your students, right? Uh, yes, uh, I want to ask you, is uh, always important to start from a question? Ah, okay, that was the question. <laughs> Question about questions, okay. Question um, about questions, yes. I think if you have um, some good question in your mind or if the students uh, express a question, you can start with that. But I think sometimes you don't necessarily have, have a question in your mind. So I think you can start with um, uh, maybe not with a project, but at least inquiry with something. For example, I usually with my students, I maybe I do a demonstration or I do some kind of like a, maybe inquiry or some kind of um, learning task when we, where we um, learn about something, but the, the actual research question might come a bit later. Because if, if, if okay. we don't necessarily come up with anything good in the beginning, maybe okay. when we learn something and inquire about it, maybe we can then think of really good question. Or maybe there are many questions and then we might um, modify them and choose them. Maybe um, think of, of if, if this is something that we want to use uh, answer now or, or is it something that we want to answer later. Okay. But, I think there is important that you, you have a question, but it is not like, I don't think you should uh, stop doing it if you wouldn't have something in the beginning. So maybe it comes through the process okay. of, of- During the process. Yeah. It comes, yeah. Of course, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. Don't, don't you think I'm a retired teacher, so um, I'm, uh, I've not been in the classroom for several years now. Uh, and uh, environmental issues just weren't around when I was teaching. We didn't think of yeah. them very much. But my impression now is that the young people themselves are very keen and enthusiastic. I would imagine in every class, there are some youngsters who are very enthusiastic about doing things to save the planet. Um, and, and that is a great resource because often if we go into a, a science lesson, perhaps we're introducing a topic that they may not be all that interested in, but this is the topic. This is the topic of, of 2020, 2021, et cetera. So there's a lot of enthusiasm there within, within the youngsters themselves that I think our job is to draw, draw that out but also to show that we value what they say and what they think. Uh, we're not just um, throwing facts at them. We're actually, you know, it's their, it's their world. They're the ones that are growing, going to grow up. Don't know how many years I've got left, but uh, we're not gonna see the major changes in my lifetime, but in their lifetime, there's gonna be huge changes on the planet unless we get organized. So um, I think that's, a, it's what your class is like in terms of how they respond. Um, and of course, different students respond in different ways, but I think valuing their own opinions is very important at the beginning of something like this. Yeah, I can completely agree with that idea. Mm. And I also see that students are willing to not only discuss about issues, but they're also willing to 
contribute on their own school and on you know their um, area. So I think they do want to make an effort. I don't know if if you also have seen that Emma and Ilian and Juliana and who else are here. So. Yes, uh, this is a problem for me because uh, sometimes maybe it's my fault. Uh, I don't see that enthusiasm because I work with uh, plus 30 students and I don't have enough time to discuss with everyone. Indeed, let's say five out of uh, 30 are uh, manifesting themselves as interested, but the others uh, are very very quiet and I, I don't really uh, succeed to make them active and involved and uh, I don't know how to do it because we are very very different and uh, we have maybe to find a way for each of them but it's, it's something uh, that requires uh, uh, time and I have only 40 minutes, uh, let's say, or 80, depends. I don't have enough time for the curricula or for the um, content and for knowing them better. So <laughs> this is my problem. How to make them, how to motivate them as a group. Yeah, and also different students do have different kinds of interests, so it's not necessarily easy to motivate all of them. Yes, and actually to answer me and my questions and to involve themselves uh, themselves in uh, making, uh, putting questions and asking questions. They are more, I don't know, because maybe in, in my country the system is 99 for percent traditional uh, class like I, I'm going I I <laughs> uh, teach my con uh, my uh, content the lessons are like I teach physics and we have to solve problems and uh, we really don't have enough time to um, to do activities and they don't have enough time to to think about and to perform or all the thing they should uh, they should do I, I don't have uh, we have let's say three hours per week and we work uh, biology chemistry separate uh, lessons so we don't have the i don't know how to explain the pretext to work uh, in a group only weekends if <laughs> we have too much free time outside of school. So you could know any method, how, how uh, uh, do your students react when you put a question, a driving question? Are, they, are your students enthusiastic? I guess it depends <laughs> <laughs> on the day and on the students and everything. I think when I started teaching many, many, many years ago, uh, we could do what we liked in the classroom. <laughs> you know, if we, I remember getting some new apparatus and I spent a week really playing with this with the class, didn't worry about the syllabus. Um, and, you know, in the recent years, everybody is tight on their syllabus. They've got to get through so much and therefore there's not the room um, and certainly uh, with the UK at the moment, with the people being sent home to isolate and so on and so forth, there's even greater pressure on people getting through a certain amount of material. So I think that is if, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, that has become very significant that you can't just go off on a tangent and, you know, have a, a little time thinking of something else. But I think the difference is that with the environment, there are youngsters who are very, very keen. And there's also a lot of material on the television. I mean, we had a programme last night on, in UK of Britain's weather in 2020. 
You know, we've had storms, we've had floods, we've had uh, fires, wildfires. And, you know, these do impact, I think, on, on the youngsters, that it's if you can only find that tap. Uh, you know, I, when I was, when another time when I was teaching, I had some really very, very weak classes. But there were, you know, there was nice things in the class as well. And teaching them physics wasn't really very good. But teaching them physics about a motorbike, you know, they all had motorbikes, these kids, these older kids. So you, you've got to find the tap. And I'm sure there's a lot of taps in the environmental area. Um, Recycling, you know, is, 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 is there, that's been there a little longer and so on. <clears throat> and the warming and so on and so forth, global warming and so on. But you've just got to find that sort of tap to open and then... But it's hard and I re accept that it's very difficult when somebody's on your shoulder saying, have you finished this part of the syllabus and you've got to get through this part by, by Christmas and so on and so forth. Um, yes, I'm very happy today because uh, it snowed a little and it was uh, like the first time in, let's say, uh, two years. Uh, past winter uh, wasn't uh, any bit of snow here in Romania. And uh, it was like a one day and they can really feel the change, uh, climate change on their uh, everyday life because it's too, uh, too dry the weather, too um, extreme weather because the, this engine with, uh, which is the, the earth atmosphere is gripped a little, it's, it's not working well. And all the feedbacks in the, this system are, uh, are sorry for, I don't know, are uh, messed up. I don't know how uh, better word, <laughs> sorry for. I think in my experience, I have observed that, that something is changing in my students. Uh, in the last year, I mean, um, our young students, are more interested in uh, the environment um, mm -hmm. because they feel what is happening. Um, the, um, the experience of Greta Thunberg, was a teenager when she starts to fight for climate change, have, um, uh, have had a great impact on the, on the young on the young people. As a teacher, I am observed that if I um, engage my students into an emotional teaching, they, uh, they, are, they respond, they are very interested in uh, what is happening. They ask me what is uh, happening and they want to know. Um, in Italy, I am from Italy, uh, we have always had a traditional way to teach. To teach. So uh, each subject was um, separate for each other. But something is changing. Uh, uh, our Minister of, um, of Culture, of Instruction, um, has, um, has given us a law and uh, since this year, we uh, have the due to teach uh, sustainability uh, across all disciplines. This is a new way to teach because um, uh, in the past years, in the last year, it was not so. And um, each teacher was um, uh, teaching only his subject. Um, I, I mean, if I am a teacher of a literature, I teach only literature. If I am a teacher of a, a math, I teach only math. But um, students 
don't want this. They want to know, the, they want to approach the same topic in all the different uh, subjects. And uh, when I start um, uh, last year to teach uh, uh, environment, approaching this problem from different point of view, I, in Italy, the teacher of a mother tongue, like me, I am teaching mother tongue, teach also geography and history. Uh, uh, this year, um, uh, uh, with all my uh, colleagues, we have um, um, scheduled the, 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 the environment problems in, uh, from, oh, sorry for my English, for all different subjects. And I have noticed that um, uh, students are um, happy are excited because when they uh, are involved about environment problem, environment question, and when they learn the, this topic from all the discipline, uh, they are they are excited and le they learn better. I hope that I have expressed my two, and uh, this is uh, what uh, what what uh, what I do. Uh, as a teacher is to, um, to learn how exactly promote their learning. And uh, I am looking for the best strategies and uh, I hope to find, uh, I hope to, to use a good strategy. But um, in a few words, um, if we enthusiasm, if you, we engage our students, uh, I'm sure because I see it, they learn, they are engaging, and they, if they, if they um, acquire the conscious that each thing that they can, um, uh, they can, uh, they will do uh, in the future, each thing that they will do. Um, they will do it with um, caring about environment. And as a teacher, our, our due, our role is to guide with a scientific topic, with a uh, teaching strategy, to let them to, to learn and to act. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with the um, and I think it's it's we see all all around the world this this focus on interdisciplinary and and uh, and collaborating between different subjects and how how we can see that this kind of like a, the link with the everyday life it's it's uh, it's making ma making learning more meaningful and engaging students. Uh, Jan, I have a question for you. Perhaps you can give us a um, few tips on, on that. We've talked a lot about these questions and, and how you know st students have these questions that are related to these uh, sustainable sustainability issues and environmental issues. Uh, how can we as, a, as a teachers, as that is our job then to uh, support the students in making the links between these issues and, and then the subjects and the learning content that we need to learn according to our, well, what we have in our syllabus or curriculum. So how we can then transfer these uh, questions into learning contents or something, some so, ideas. Okay, so what's the that? question that if students are asking asking questions like from all, the, all over the place and then you are thinking of how to incorporate into the content you have chosen to teach them, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, yeah. You have, as you've been do, doing this with the teachers and you, perhaps you have some, some yeah, ideas. Yeah, it's not necessarily easy because, <laughs> because they might ask things that are not on the topic you are supposed to, to teach them. So I guess you have two options. You Either you go with the questions and or then you continue with your own topic you are choosing. But um, one thing that I have and also uh, some other teachers have been doing is that um, 
if you if they either they ask the questions or then they then you ask them to ask the questions um, you might address some of them um, there at the time if, if, if it's content connected to that but then you also might yourself um, collect them or ask the students to collect them for example in their um, um, like papers or, or wherever and then you um, either you go with the questions later or then you um, make changes to your like future teaching plans according to the questions. I guess the thing which, which I do uh, in many times is that um, I take the questions uh, like on a separate paper and then I, I see if if they, uh, if if it's something that I can possibly address in some other uh, lessons. If I can't do them right away, or then I try to think if if it's something that we could, if we would have time to go through them later in the courses. So I think it's um, it depends on on way you, your way of teaching if you are you feel like you can address them at a the moment whether you can or with the students you can try to answer them right away or then you can try to figure out if it's something that you could do in the next next lesson for example if it's something that you can carry out an inquiry later in the course i don't know if it answers to your question but something i have been doing like practically one thing you can you could do <clears throat> is to allocate a short few minutes, maybe at the end of a lesson, for their concerns. To me, it's about the fact that you value their question. You know, not that you brush it aside because it's not on the syllabus. So, an idea might be to sort of allocate five minutes. Um, at the end of a lesson, and we should be able to do that as experienced teachers to sort of make a 45 minute lesson in 40 minutes. So you've got that five minutes. Um, so you can address that question. Um, and of course, we won't know all the answers. That's another thing that you may have to go and research it yourself. And then you can point the child in, in the right direction. Um, you know, or just give them encouragement to, to follow it up, because I'm sure a huge amount isn't on the syllabus yet. It might be on the syllabus in three or four years, but it isn't yet. But you can always encourage the students by giving them that little bit of, that little bit of time. Um, and there's masses and masses of information around on the environment. And the students themselves they're certainly better than I am now. My grandchildren whiz around the internet and do all sorts of things. Um, you know, they're used to searching the internet for information. They're used to checking the validity. I mean, I think that's another aspect of this. Of people will, you know, we've had this with the coronavirus um, uh, vaccine and so on. There are scare stories and so on, but the students themselves should now be able to check the validity. Who has said this? Who has made this claim about the environment? Is it backed up by a university? Or is it just some somebody in a, in a little room somewhere who calls himself Professor XYZ, putting something on Facebook and so on and worrying everybody? So there's a lot, I think there's quite a lot you could probably do. I mean, I'm sorry because I'm not teaching. Well, I am. Not sorry that I'm not teaching in a classroom anymore, but I'm sorry that I'm not in the classroom to, to say this is what I do. But um, I th when I was teaching, uh, that just sounds awful because I keep saying this, but one thing that I used to have a little problem sometimes that I used to set at the end of a lesson. So you have a couple of minutes left and you say, what about this? And I got to get something out of the drawer and show them and then leave them with the, the question. Didn't take very long. Some of them would actually investigate the question. Some of them wouldn't. Probably, if I'm realistic, probably 
three or four out of 30 would investigate the question. Um, but it was just another way of engaging with them, I think, to have this little extra slot. And especially nowadays, I think, when you've got this restricted curriculum that you've got to get through, um, giving yourself that little two minutes, three minutes to do something a little extra is perhaps a way in. I don't know what you think about that, those who are still battling away in their classrooms. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. And also the point that you make in, in making the students and also the teachers to value the mm. questions that the students have. There is a question in the chat. Uh, good afternoon, Jana. Could you please share with your thoughts which themes could help teachers to get sustainable development? For example, I have got 11 to 12 years old students, which themes could be useful or interested, interesting for them? How and what should we teach them? <laughs> That's an easy question. Um, um, you, you mean like in general, not connected to a certain like discipline, maybe in, in general? I don't know. Quite tough question. <laughs> what kind of topic would be interesting for for that old students about sustainability? Maybe I would start with something local. It's something that students have some kind of a connection with. So maybe not too like abstract. So for example, they might have have an interest to make some some kind of um, project on their own surroundings or um, yeah I don't know what could it be well of course recycling is also one option but there might be also some other things for like for example connected to like transportation or and usually for example energy is something that students are really interested according to my knowledge to deal with maybe food or, or, or clothes or it's also something like they could be interested in and also very important. And also, for example, clothing industry, there are many um, mm -hmm. kind of aspects connected to that also social and uh, economical besides the ecological aspects. So maybe there are some ideas and also, if you want to connect it to certain discipline, uh, always water is really important and, and the atmosphere. I don't know what, other, what others think. Do you have other ideas what you could address with that, that age students? I think pollution could be something very important for them because there are students who are facing uh, respir uh, respiratory issues breathing breath, uh, breathing issues so something about the quality of the air about uh, let's say um, spreading of diseases in uh, certain atmospheric conditions i don't know i wonder if you could get in um using the united nations 17 sustainable goals you do know about those, you know, you mm -hmm. must know. So you, you could perhaps um, just either put the the chart with all those cards on on the screen and say what which one concerns you. Um, or you could have cards or you could have a a vote on, you know, in the in the classroom if you give out the 17 go. I mean initially they're quite vague in some ways, but uh, so they would feel they've got um, they've got power of the choice, you know. It, uh, yeah. You're actually channeling what they're thinking about, but they think they're making the free choice themselves. But I think there's a lot in those 17 goals that, uh, well, put it this way, if there's not one of the 17 goals that concerns them or that they can identify with, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> Uh, you know that's a resource. You just I've just looked up uh, the, the nice picture on um, on Google. If you do seventeen 
SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. Just getting away in, I think, I think the thing is to get the kids en engaged and then you go for your method, that it'll, whether it's a project, whether it's questioning or whether it's something else. But I think, this, I wonder whether, I wonder whether there's some youngsters sometimes feel a bit frustrated that they're, they're interested in things that they see on the television that are to do with science. And then they come back and they're taught acids and bases or Newton's laws of motion or, you know, um, whatever it is, just is in another world. And somebody already mentioned using everyday things is very important, isn't it? So that they can, they can engage. Um, and crumbs, this is so important for them. You know, um, I'm ancient, you're all old, and there, they've got so much more of their life in front of them to live on the planet. You'd think they would be concerned, and indeed a lot of them are. But uh, I think those goals are quite good to sort of, uh, you know, say there's all these things we've got to think about, apart from anything else. I hope that's a helpful idea. Yeah, I would also definitely use the the goals. I think that one way to talk about it with young young students might be even animals. I mean, those children who are not so interested about the recycling or the climate change, but the idea of animals who might or which might face the extinction that might be more interesting, like um, tigers and others. Maybe, maybe like cute or dangerous animals that they might be interested in and to hear that they are in danger because of the climate change that might motivate some of them. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will turn some on, you know. You're hitting emotional chords, as somebody said. As, uh, and but I don't, I haven't really seen all that many. There must be stories around somebody else mentioned about teaching through stories engaging the, the children the young the little ones particularly will get involved in a story as if it's very real to them so having stories that you can you can tell that uh, there's a help for little ones what kind of stories have you emma been using well, I don't. <laughs> I think Emma had some uh, story telling yeah. method. Uh, uh, my, I have tested the different methods. The, at first, uh, um, as I have told, I have uh, worked with my students with the storytelling. Okay, so uh, they have uh, written a lot of story uh, related to climate change or environment issue. Uh, what what um, I want to uh, say just one thing. Uh, at first, I have um, uh, 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 I have introduced the topic uh, in a scientific point of, of view. Uh, I mean, uh, at first time I have uh, teach uh, with the scientific data about what uh, what is. Uh, uh, pollution, what is uh, uh, the real problem of the world. And uh, in the second uh, step, uh, my students have written a story. Um, I have realized with my students also a project-based learning uh, about um, uh, um, sustainable agriculture, okay? Uh, it was an interesting, um, they have been interesting because of uh, how they have worked. Uh, they have, um, uh, they have uh, at first uh, researched what, is, uh, uh, what means uh, sustainable agriculture and uh, what is happening to agriculture in all the world. And um, they have realized a practical work uh, for example, they, um, they have collected data uh, going to local market and um, they have confronted the, uh, 
the, the product of a supermarket and the product of a local market. They have uh, worked a lot about this topic and uh, they have realized that uh, at, a, uh, at the least uh, an act, in fact, uh, they have realized uh, a deviant, they have uh, collected the data with uh, the, my colleagues of NETS, uh, they have um, uh, uh, realized a public debate during uh, the open day of the school, so they have uh, uh, talked about uh, their work uh, with the family, and uh, it uh, has been uh, a, a good experience. Uh, and uh, uh, I can say another thing. In my ordinary teaching, I, um, I can say this. Each time that I, uh, each day, each time, each day that I uh, approach uh, uh, my lessons of the day, I always find uh, something who uh, let me to talk about the environment issue. I mean, if, uh, if um, I am teaching about uh, uh, poetry, about poem, I use a poem who inspired to talk about the environment. Um, if I am, uh, if the, the lessons of the day is about uh, history, uh, 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 I always find a, a topic that let me uh, to, to talk about environment. I think that if we change our point of view, if we change uh, our um, uh, approach as, as a teacher, our approach with our subject, with our discipline, we always find the way to talk about the students, uh, about uh, all the problems, about the sustainability. Uh, I can say this. Um. There is a few links in the chat if, uh, about this and other ways of um, dealing with sustainable de development in school. Uh, there is one about uh, storytelling in preschool, so like for le uh, super <laughs> young children and other great links. So I really recommend everyone to uh, check the links and save them for later. <laughs> Um, linked to the storytelling, there's also, uh, I worked, uh, I work at the Luma Center Finland and, uh, with the Starty program. So that's why I shared you some of the, some of the, uh, projects done by, uh, kids and youth during the last couple of years, uh, with a sustainable development idea or, ed ed uh, environmental education. There's also, um, Every year we also get a project uh, that uh, kind of uses uh, storytelling and they link it to drama. So they are making making a play or, or musical or something uh, and, and in a way uh, wrapping what they're learning about science in this context of, of the drama and, and, and what they're then performing as, 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 as at, at the end as, as, the, as the final product of the, of the pro, uh, project. So I think that's um, uh, to me. It's it's a very engaging way of of, of engaging the students that might not be so interested in in the science, but they also get uh, enthusiastic with this project. Then and and they might even get enthusiastic about about, about the topic and and the science involved with it once they get in, engaged the, into the doing the drama or something. So 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 uh, like. If if you want to know more, I can uh, I can find you uh, other links also that that to this this there are some some links to primary and early education, but this this is also fitting method for second upper secondary schools. So I, I think so too. So all levels of education.
Yes, and as the clock is showing us that we are almost at the end, we're going to have something to say to the end. Well, um, nothing special. Thank you for the discussion. It was interesting to hear what you have been doing and what kind of ideas you have. And also, I think I got some new ideas for my own like teaching and, and researching and especially linked to to valuing um, questions and uh, um, engaging and uh, using those emotional also aspects related to this. It's really important not to forget about that. Thank you, everyone. And have a good evening and hope to see you next year again in these lounges. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice Christmas. You too. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays.